Rub up your engines. Vernon Martinez and he says, Scotty, can you mix different oil brands if it's the same type? For example, 5W30. Can I mix them as long as the same type of different brand? Well, you can because you're not changing the viscosity or anything. I wouldn't make a point of doing that all the time because each manufacturer generally have different additives to the oil. It's better not to gamble with wondering which additives are in the oil that's in your car. It's better to kind of leave them to be exactly the same. Now, of course, here, <laughs> even I am guessing. They don't tell you what's in them. <laughs> That's their trade secrets, you know? So I never really know what's in the oil. And they're not telling you everything. And they say, well, that's a trade secret. What's in I remember one time years ago, a friend of mine was a, a chemical engineer, and he was showing me some of the patents for some of the different oils. And boy, he read them to me, and it made no sense at all. I mean, they had such obfuscating language that you couldn't understand what they put in the thing. So, <laughs> you're never going to actually know, but it's not a good idea to make a point of mixing them all the time. I mean, yeah, sure, you're a quart low on oil and you're at a store or you're at a gas station, yeah, you can use the same, as long as it's the same viscosity, you could use another one, but it's better to always stick to the same oil just because <laughs> nobody really knows what additives are in the different ones and they won't tell you. Mad Lemmer 25 says, Scotty, what do you think of Ford's Coyote 5 liter double overhead cam V8 engine? Is it reliable? And the F-Series trucks and Mustang. Oh, yeah. You know, the 5 liter, that's, that's a good engine, you know. I mean, some people have beefs here and there because you understand you get the double overhead cam V8 5 liter engine, put it in the Mustang. Guys generally beat the heck out of them. They're getting that big engine because they want to drive like maniacs. And if you drive like enough of a maniac, you can break anything if you really drive it fast enough, you know? I'll give you an example from the motorcycle world. I used to have a Suzuki, it was a 750, and it was a screaming motorcycle. I never had a problem with the engine or anything at all. It was an unbelievable motorcycle. But I know people that blew the engines up. Now, I mean, I was maybe driving at tops 130, 140 miles an hour. Some guys out there were driving as fast as they could go, 180 or something, and yeah, you just keep it as fast as it goes, as long as it can, eventually something will blow up. There's no arguing that. Those are good engines in the Coyotes. They're, they're a really good engine, but like anything else, if you beat the heck out of it, eventually something's gonna break. If you take care of it and maintain it, you can generally get many years of life out of those things. Jason Caney says, hey, I just bought a used 2006 Toyota Avalon with 79,000 miles. Underneath, around the CV axle, there's grease. What should I do? All cars that are front wheel drive now, they got two half shafts, the CV shafts, one on the left side, one on the right side. And when there's grease around on that means that the rubber boot has broken somehow, it's cracked, and the grease is coming out. In the olden days, we mechanics used to get them and we'd take them apart and if they made any noise and they were worn, then we'd have to replace the CV joint itself and put it back on an axle, which was a pain in the butt. But these days, with aftermarket parts available that are really reasonably priced, we just replace the whole axle assembly because then you get new joints and the new rubber boots, everything's new. And on that thing, a 2006 Ford Avalon, last time I bought one, cost me like 75 bucks for the whole new unit. So we just replaced the whole thing. Now, if it doesn't make any noise yet, you can drive it a while that way. But once it starts making noise, clacking and stuff, then you got to replace the whole thing. So if you plan on keeping it a long time, just replace the whole thing now. George Santos. George says, Scotty, what do you think of a Buick LeSabre 2003 with 70,000 miles? It's in great shape. They want 3,400, but I think I can get them down to three grand. I'm not a GM fan, but hey, there were okay cars. It's got the V6 engine in it. If you can get it for three grand with 70,000 miles, it's not that much miles. It could be a good car to knock around in. What the heck? I mean, for that kind of money, these days, you're not going to get all that much, you know, if you're going to pay three grand and you're looking at a Toyota or something, you're going to have to get one that's really old with high mileage and stuff. That's not that bad of a deal for that kind of money. They haven't checked up by a mechanic anyway because you can't trust anybody. They haven't put a scan tool in. I mean, the scan tools that we mechanics have, hey, they can't hide anything. We put it in and we got reams of data to analyze and the fancy tools like the one I have, it's color coded. So it's green, yellow, red, meaning green is good, yellow is marginal, red's bad. So we look through everything fast for the colors, and we look at the yellow and red, if any exist, and analyze the shape the car's in. So you're not going to get ripped once a mechanic checks it out. And it could be a good car. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.